Hello. Well, good morning. Uh, it's been another busy week here at the Capitol. Uh, bills are moving and some have made it to my desk. Uh, with the transmittal break coming up, I'm sure things will get moving even more quickly and give you plenty of news to cover, especially about the issues that Montanans care so much about. With the legislature, uh, we're working to deliver on Montana's priorities. Uh, Montana's want greater opportunity, more good paying jobs, the best education possible for their kids, affordable, accessible, high quality health care, safe communities, attainable housing, stronger families, our way of life, including our public lands, protected, and significant, meaningful tax relief. On that last point, uh, that's why we're working to deliver the largest tax cut in Montana's history. Our plan delivers Montana's largest income tax cut ever, providing relief to Montana taxpayers at every income level. Our plan also delivers historic, meaningful property tax relief. Hardworking Montanans deserve to keep more of what they earn. And I look forward to providing them the tax relief they need and deserve. I'm encouraged by the progress the legislature is making, uh, but we need to get those tax bills across the finish line as quickly as possible. Montanans need tax relief now. Let's get it done. I ran for office for two reasons. One, to create greater opportunities for Montanans and more good paying jobs. And two, to protect our Montana way of life. This means protecting things that make Montana, Montana. Our rich outdoor heritage, vast public lands and abundant natural resources are a few of them. We must protect them for future generations, our kids and our grandkids. One way we can do that, active forest management. Montana faces a forest health crisis, our forests need to be better managed. When a forest is managed properly, we have less severe wildfires, more recreational opportunities, more wildlife habitat, and more jobs. It's why we've made active forest management a top priority for our administration. And I have some great news to announce here today on that front. When I took office, I charged the Department of Natural Resources and Conservation with increasing the pace and scale of forest management. We set an ambitious goal in 2021 to more than double the number of acres treated by the state in just that first year. DNRC got it done. In 2022, we set another ambitious goal for forest management and DNRC got it done again. Under the leadership of Director Amanda Castor, DNRC treated 31,000 forested acres last year alone. This is a record. For perspective, in 2020, the, straight, the state treated only 11,000 acres. This increase is almost triple in just two years. In 2021 and 2022, DNRC placed a collective 56,000 acres under active management. This is great news for Montana and even better news. We're not done yet. To expand the scope of active forest management in Montana, our budget includes $10 million per year to expand active forest management in Montana. For the well being of our people, their homes, their property, and their livelihoods, I urge the legislature to get this funding to my desk. As we better steward our lands, we're also increasing public access to them. In just two years, we've increased Montanans' access to tens of thousands of acres of public lands. That includes over 100,000 acres in the big snowies alone. We've been able to chalk up so many wins because our mission is clear. Number one, keep public lands in public hands. Number two, increase access to our public lands. And thirdly, listen to the voices of the local communities in all land decisions that we make. I think most Montanans would agree with this mission. We stand together to protect our public lands 
for future generations. Diverse groups are coming together like never before around this common mission. I want to particularly note the work that the Montana Outfitters and Guides is doing, working in conjunction with the Montana Citizens Elk Management Coalition. Together, they have put forward a package of bills for sportsmen, outfitters, and landowners. One of those bills is Senate Bill 58, carried by Senator Steve Heinbaugh. His bill doubles the cap on payments to landowners who open their land up to hunters through FWP's block management program. It's good for hunters and it's good for landowners. I urge the legislature to get this bill to my desk. I say this often, but we have far more in common as Montanans than divides us. Common ground is always there if we're willing to look for it and work to achieve it. Let's continue to find that on this issue that matters so much to us, our public lands. As I mentioned earlier, we've chalked up some big wins. I was in Anaconda yesterday to celebrate one of them, the expansion of public access in the Mount Hagen Wildlife Management Area. Last August, I was proud to expand this WMA as chair of the Montana Land Board. Our expansion creates additional access to the state's largest WMA for hunting, fishing, trapping, snowmobiling, and hiking. And in addition, it gives access to additional tens of thousands of acres of federal land. But we could not have done it alone. This expansion wouldn't have been possible without the generosity of the former landowners, Roger and Gail Burnett. The Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation was also a critical partner to get this project across the finish line, as were sportsmen groups and local leaders. It's a testament to what we can accomplish when we work together. The Big Snowies is another big win. Last fall, we created the Big Snowies, Snowy Mountains WMA when the state acquired nearly 5,700 acres in the area. As a result of our action, we provided public access to over 100 thousand acres of federal lands and state lands which were previously landlocked. There are also many partners to thank on this victory, especially Shodare Children's Hospital and Forrest Allen, the prior owner. Thanks to their generosity, our new WMA not only will offer exceptional hunting with excellent habitat and access to the big Snowy's elk herd, but it will also remain open for cattle grazing our state has a vested interest in seeing land conserved for wildlife while also keeping ranchers on the landscape. Production ag and conservation are not mutually exclusive. We married production ag and conservation in this agreement and achieved a win-win for Montana. And let me be clear, increasing public access is a win-win for Montana. Public access is good for Montanans, and it's good for local jobs and small businesses. Adjacent to our public lands, there are many small businesses that make our communities and our state such a special place to call home and for others to visit. Sugar Loaf Lodge and Cabins, right down the road from Mount Hagen, is a great example. Yesterday, I had a chance to visit this family-run operation along with the First Lady. Owners Monica and Jay Winfield told me how nearby public lands support their business. They said, adjacent, the adjacent WMA is fantastic. That was the word they used for their business. Offering hunting in the fall, snowmobiling and cross country skiing in the winter, and hiking all summer long. And let me just add, uh, Monica makes an awesome cranberry scone. As we increase access to our public lands, our communities benefit. When our world-class resources are not as accessible as they ought to be, our communities miss out. They miss out on the benefits of, that tourism would bring and our quality of life as Montanans suffers. When visitors come to Montana to enjoy our public lands, they bring their wallets. Community leaders and economic development experts across Montana agree. Greater public access is good for our growing economy. 
If there's one thing to leave with today, it's this. There is much, much more that brings us together as Montanans than separates us. As the legislative session rolls on, we'll continue finding common ground and delivering results for the people of Montana. And with that, I'd be happy to open it up for questions. Who'd like to go first? Shaylee. I have a question about um, some other legislation, so I apologize, I'm gonna pivot. But um, I was watching House Judiciary this morning. I saw uh, Lieutenant Governor Juris come in on, on Representative Carlson's bill, House Bill 605. There was another, another bill yesterday, the other day, from Representative Mercer. Um, both seem to seek some more legislative oversight of, of state agencies. I'm curious what you make of those efforts and if you think what do you think of the legislature anymore? Percent? Well, as you know, there's a lot of bills going through the legislature. So I'll, the ones that make it through the process and get to my desk, we'll give them full consideration. Sure. I guess I just knew that Lieutenant Governor Joyce had come in on the one this morning. Do you have any thoughts? I don't think there's been many hearings she hasn't been in. Mm -hmm. Sure. <laughs> Other questions? Yes. Hey, um, keeping in mind what you just said. <laughs> Uh, there's this bill, Bill 346, that would put $2 billion into the coal trust. And uh, I've heard that the governor's office, as well as public leadership in both chambers, is uh, maybe agitated by this possibility. There's people from all factions in the GOP, as well as quite a lot of Democrats on the bill. And I'm wondering, just kind of based on what your assessment of the budget is and the status sheet that we got today, whether you think there's room in our surplus with the priorities that you've been hearing that legislative leaders have been for $2 billion into the coal trust. Yeah, so uh, our priorities in the budget have been pretty clear. It's really four things. One, significant tax relief. We have proposed a billion dollars in relief to Montanans, both for property tax and income and both permanent and uh, permanent rate reductions and uh, rebates. Secondly, we gotta fix what's broken in the state. We've been kicking the can down the road at our state prison and mental health, uh, as well as infrastructure and affordable housing. Third, uh, we need to save for a rainy day, just like any Montana family would do. And lastly, we propose to pay off the state debt. So those are our priorities. Uh, there are a lot of other bills in the legislature, uh, and we'll have to see the, how, what, what ends up making it to my desk. But we'll continue to advocate to make sure we get Montanans relief on taxes and uh, fix what's broken. Are there any online? No? Okay. I've got one. Yes. Um, going back to public lands and conservation stuff, last week we saw um, Representative Bertolio bring a bill implementing some of the changes to marijuana revenue funding that you have in your budget, um, cutting about 75% of the funding for Habitat Montana, which a lot of conservation groups have been speaking out against. And then there's a hearing today for Representative Mercer's bill um, that would looks like remove all of that um, funding from wildlife projects and put it towards the heart fund. What are your thoughts on that and, and reasoning for, for those kinds of budget shifts? Because I know Representative Bertolio's bill is directly from your budget. Yeah, so I uh, laid out our priorities here today in my comments. I mean, we're, we're aggressively pursuing conservation projects at FWP. Uh, I'm proud of what we did in the snowies, the celebration we had at Mount Hagen yesterday, uh, the work we've done to inventory all the access deserts for our navigable rivers. Uh, so we have an aggressive conservation uh, uh, agenda, and we're gonna use Habitat, Human uh, Habitat Montana uh, to fund in part those projects. I'm assured by FWP uh, we have record funding in that fund already. Uh, to satisfy the projects that are coming forward. That's why in our budget, we have taken the funds from marijuana and directed them towards law enforcement, addiction recovery, uh, the, uh, uh, and other things to help people get healthy. Uh, but I am confident that the money is, exists at FWP to do the conservation projects we have in front of us. Thanks. Any other questions? Yes. Sure, I got one um, on Mars. We have about uh, reimbursement rates. The package the legislature has put forward I think goes beyond or increase in your executive proposed budget for uh, Medicaid reimbursement rates for providers. And I'm wondering if that's something you're comfortable with or if that's sort of an ongoing negotiation point to try to get them down to your level. Um, we'll have to see what ends up to my desk. Uh, we recommended uh, record increases in Medicare and Medicaid reimbursement rates. Uh, again, I rely on the legislature. I don't have uh, appropriations authority, only the legislature has that. Uh, but we proposed in our budget increasing those rates and we'll see what the legislative process produces. And maybe just a quick follow up on that. What, I guess, has been your uh, administration's role, whether through Budget Director Osmond,
Hoffman's and others in negotiations with the legislature on this point. Obviously, they, they write and sign the budget, but I imagine you are not just going to let them do that. Okay. Well, we meet, I sit down personally with uh, both the majority leadership and the minority leadership every single week, uh, and we continue to have dialogue on all of the many things that the legislature is facing. So I'm, I'm hopeful uh, that uh, we have an opportunity to really do great things for the people of Montana. Again, getting them tax relief, fixing what's broken, streamlining red tape so that uh, more Montanans can prosper. So that's great. Yeah, one more, Shaylee. Yes, thank you. I, um, I just have to follow up on provider rates. Um, the Democrats have expressed concern that the guide house study is based on data from 2019 and it's already out of date. We've seen a lot of inflation since 2019, that costs are going up. Do you have any concern about about the guide house benchmarks where they're at right now and, and that being old data? Yeah, I mean, we took all the inputs and made the recommendations recommendations that we did. We need to have fair rates so these services are available to folks. Uh, but again, the legislature is going to have their hearings, they're going to collect public input, and I'm, I'm sure we'll get a better result. We have an online question? Yes, Holly Michaels calling in online. Hi, Holly. Hey, Governor, thanks for taking my question. Um, I wanted to ask about some of the abortion legislation that we're seeing come through this week. I remember your state is your first address um, in a previous session, you pointed to specific legislation you wanted to see at your desk, and then you signed it. Now that is in an injunction, but I'm wondering if this session, if there's specific legislation you would like to see at your desk. Yeah, there's a lot of things there. I'm, I'm very clearly, I ran as a pro life candidate. The people of Montana elected me to defend life. I think we need to defend it. Uh, through its four full scope from conception through natural death. Uh, in the end, we, uh, we need to see what bills uh, make it through the legislature get to my desk and I'll give them serious consideration. Okay, thank you everybody.